Hello, and welcome back to the yearly tradition that is the Talk Toys End of Year Wrap Up. This year, we're wrapping up the year 2022, because uh, we just thought we'd pick it at random. So, as always, I'm joined by my three guests, Tom. Hello. Tim. Hello. And Dan. All right. And, as <sighs> always, we will be talking about various categories of what we did and enjoyed this year. So... If you haven't seen the other uh, two years that we did this for, this isn't necessarily the best release of 2022, but rather the best of something we've experienced in 2022. So we'll get on to the first category, which is best game. Now, this doesn't cover 2022 games. This can be any game. If you discovered Pong this year and that was your favourite game, then, man, you're fucking new to games, I guess. But you, you can you can nominate Pong if you'd like. Um, so, is everybody ready to delve in to this magical look back on the year 2022? I've been ready since 2025. That's good. That's we're coming back a couple of years just to because we missed this one. So, um, yes, yeah. You'll need to listen to 2024 to understand my answers. You won't have the uh, background knowledge if you don't. Yes. Um, right. Well, so being as we're on games, I shall start as is customary. So. My nomination for the best game of 2022, and actually is a game that came out this year as well, is Hollow Cure. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, that it does take a little bit of explaining. So, Hollow Cure technically is a sort of casual roguelike uh, PC game. However, it's it's like very strongly based on the basis of Vampire Survivors, which also came out this year. The only thing that really puts Holokiwa above Vampire Survivors for me is the fact it has cute anime girls, which uh, are one of my favourite things, obviously. So it's kind of a Hollow Live themed version of Vampire Survivors, although it does do its own thing as well, where each character kind of has different upgrade paths and stuff, whereas Vampire Survivors will give you one weapon to use per character and you kind of focus on that. Holokiwa, I think, kind of takes that formula and just runs it a little bit better. Um, and yeah, honestly, it's it's a very simple game. But honestly, Holokiwa, I think I've spent an entire 50, 60 hours on easily by now. And it's just, it doesn't get old. It's it's such a fun, casual kind of experience. I think, yeah, I think the uh, one thing it has over Vampire Survivor is there's more difference between the characters. Because when you're playing Vampire Survivor, the characters you use don't matter as much as the upgrades you pick. Whereas Hollow Cure, you've got set things that each playable character can only get if you play as that character, which I like. I yeah, for, for example, like uh, if you play as Watson Amelia, her whole kit is about getting criticals, and um, all of her specific upgrades are all about getting criticals. So, as Tim was saying, with Vampire Survivors, you could play any character any way you want, really. Holocure is more specific, but it's more of a fun way as well. It may, it's a bit more satisfying, I find. Although Vampire Survivors is a very close second for me, but Holocure by far takes With those it. kind of games, it's very... Uh, I, I mean, I can't say I've played Holocure, but i played a lot of Vampire Survivors, and it's just really chill. Hmm. Well, I say chill. It's, it's easy to get into, uh, but it's hard to master as well. And uh, It is. Uh, and... Um, but yeah, I love dipping in and out of it as like a quick game and stuff. And, mm. um, yeah, it's perfect for that. If you've got twenty minutes to kill, but you don't want to like jump into a, a game that you're playing, I mean, it's it's perfect. Both Vampire yeah. Survivors and Holocure. Um, another roguelike, isn't it? It's it's fun. It's funny actually because I feel like very often there's been a roguelike that I've played a put a lot of time into for the last few years. I know it was a um. It was a genre that kind of kicked off in the mid 2010s, I'd say. Yeah. But uh, we're, we're getting to a zenith. And the best thing about it is, whilst you know you go into a game and there's one off upgrades, and when you die, you, that's it, there is some sort of progression as well on everything to continue on to your next game. Hmm. And it lets you, even if you do terribly, still have a leg up the next time you play. And I think it's very satisfying. It makes you come back. And I feel like on Holocure, when I've been playing it, when you hit that critical mass where you're like, 
restoring as much HP as you're losing and stuff like that. It is so satisfying. It absolutely sets all the endorphins off. And yeah. I have to say, Red, we've gone, I think, three years in a row now talking about VTubers. So, well done for getting them in again. Well, I mean, hey, it's... Uh... That that's life now. We we live we lived in a pre VTuber world, and then we're now living in a post VTuber world. This uh, th- there's no there's no in between really. Would anyone like to nominate their best game that they've played I'm, this year? I'm happy to go next if cool. that's okay. Yeah. Um, right. Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, and I I think you guys might know what I'm going to say. Um. <sighs> God, it feels bad saying it, but I've got to get it out with my system. Yeah. Fortnite. It's got to right. be Fortnite. I think... Gotta... <laughs> I think we've all put tens of hours into it. If not, I don't know, we might be coming to the hundred sort of hour mark. I think I'm we're close sure. to, if not excelling a hundred hours, I'd say, yeah. quite comfortably. I think, I think the funny thing about Fortnite is we got in on a whim... Ridian wanted to play the Dragon Ball event. R- um, Ridian and Dan, and I think Tim, uh, they all played Fortnite before. I'd never played Fortnite till this year, but you guys, you'd only played it like briefly. S- yeah, sparing. I, I, I dipped yeah. in back and forth. Me and Dan played yeah. a decent bit. There's a few streams yeah, we that. did together, but we spent like a dozen hours or something. It wasn't, you know. But. I think this is a theme that I found. The kids are on to something, right? <laughs> because I think last year we played a lot of Minecraft. We did. Mm. Uh, what else have we played? I feel, oh, we played Among Us. I we mean, have. the we kids did. are on to something. They're I know. Really next year, next year, you're gonna all be on Roblox. I'm calling. No, it. we said this the other day. There's a line. There's a line, and that line is drawn at Roblox. I don't know, so lads. There are some. There are some pretty interesting Roblox games. I think we should try. <laughs> I, I think the I'm best out. thing about Fortnite for us, and I, I've said this to you guys, you are ultimately against a lot of people who aren't very good at video <laughs> games because uh, they're about eight. Well, and you make for yourself. I I feel like most nights we get at least one victory royale. I mean, I've been playing it today, and I've had a victory royale, and I've played about four games. So I see, now that we're on, you know, Ridian's end of the year podcast, you're calling them victory royales. When every <laughs> other day of the year, it's just a simple Vic Roy. Come on, Vic now, Roy. Tom. No oh. need to put on airs for the YouTube viewers. We've got but... to that point of playing Fortnite where we we <laughs> we've stopped ironically referring to it them as Vic Roys, and now it just becomes sort of muscle memory to refer to them as that. So they're gonna become VRs next. Just give me you want oh, to get some man. VRs tonight, lads. Mm. Just, just. To go over the last few things I want to really say about it. It has fantastic ongoing support. Mm -hmm. Um, They've just put a massive graphical update on the game. I know I launched the game recently and it was like running at a snail's pace. And I was like, it looks beautiful though. I had to turn the graphics down. (laughs) Um, It's got the characters in it. The amount of characters you can play as. They don't have any like thing they do to the game but like they're really cool and it's cool to collect them um, not the skins though not always, yet we've played about three different seasons now I think and they always had a really good mechanic um, and the mechanics really change things up and you do base your gameplay around it as well as that they they swap the weapons, so all the weapon loadouts completely change. You've got to change your playstyle, and I think I've I've changed quite a lot. Um, mm. And honestly, it's just pretty easy to pick up and play on the spot. Um, but that's kind of my, you know, me falling over Fortnite. I can't believe, I can't believe. A few <laughs> years ago, I I turned my nose up at it, but like not anymore, not anymore. There, there are very few games that let sort of Darth Vader, Indiana Jones, Goku, and Deku 
all sort of team up and go wipe out like Wolverine and Spider Man. And do a funny dance together. Yes, think, and do a lit from, AF uh, dance. Well, me and Red were back, I played it when it came out also, and mm. it's totally different now. It's a completely different, like. It's, yeah, game, it's fully overhauled. They've really, to be fair to them, they've fully fine tuned the game. Because when Dan and I played, it was fun, don't get me wrong, but it did feel a little bit bare bones but comparing that to fortnite in 2022 is insane they really yeah. have actually kept making it better not just making it a skinner box of money it's like and it's a good example of uh, of a free to play game to hmm. be honest uh there are others out there that are like shamefully um like bad and rip you off i believe but this one is you know as as far as they go it's pretty good and you know people it's why people go back to it all the time is because there's always they they come up with something new new characters and um and and yeah so so yeah so don't worry tom it's no judgment yeah no i mean we've all spent too long on fortnite now to really have any stand in to be like (laughs) tom what are you on about (laughs) Right, would someone else like to nominate their game next? I'll I'll go next. Right. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to put my put my choice in. So my did come out this year. Um, I think I've been pretty good this year. I think most of my selections are actually things that came out this year. I've been mm-hmm. a very up to date and recent boy. So my pick of game of the year is Pokemon mm-hmm. Legends Arceus. Not going Scarlet or Fire. <laughs> um, uh, although I did enjoy that as well, but um, Legends Arceus, um, I had such kind of I was optimistic, but also not optimistic at the same time. They would let us down quite considerably in the last couple of uh, in the last couple of games. I'm not going to lie, uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pool was absolute horseshit, right. and and the uh, Gen 3 remakes weren't much better either. So when they said they're doing another Gen 4 game, I was uh, mm, I was dubious. I wasn't fully on board. But obviously I am a uh, a Nintendo simp, so I did pre-order it and, and played it on day one anyway. And I was pleasantly surprised, very pleasantly surprised. The way that the game unfolds is really different to an usual Pokemon game with a big emphasis on catching Pokemon instead of making them battle, which I love. I'm a collector. That's why I spent so much money on trading cards because I like collecting things. So the fact that it was encouraging you not to do the same thing as you've done the last like eight gens and to go out and like catch things and the fact that you had the kind of catching on the overworld where you could creep up on things and throw your balls at them. You didn't have to go through the whole rigmarole of lowering HP and all, all that. Um, it worked for me. It was a new experience. Um, there is room for improvement, definitely. Uh, I think there's some fine-tuning that can be done. Mm-hmm. I'm on the fence about how dumbed down the battle system is. I think it made sense under the circumstances for that game because, as I said, the emphasis was on the catching rather than the battling. Yeah. So I guess it makes sense in that regard. I wouldn't have had a problem if, you know, they had that mechanic of the catching and put the full battle system in as well. I, 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 part of me thinks that would have been even better, but but I can see why they went for it. Yeah. And the new forms as well they put in as well, was they were just really cool, giving some focus on old mons like Stantler, giving Stantler an evil just, just makes sense. Um, so yeah, it was a uh, it was a good game made even better because it had low expectations. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, as you were saying, the um, they sort of turned it a bit Monster Hunter, which was mm. an interesting direction, but totally made sense as well because it was like frontier time old Japan basically. Yeah. So you know, yeah. it, it made sense that it's all about like trying to tame wildlife basically because you weren't living in an idyllic world shared with Pokemon, you were sort of in little villages where Pokemon were like running rampant. So yeah. 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 And a lot of like those gameplay aspects, a lot of the gameplay it, it wasn't revealed that much in the trailers. Like mm. they obviously hinted at it and, and showed some gameplay, but the the way the game actually unfolded was fresh as you were playing it. It wasn't like you didn't really know what to expect until you started playing it, which is always good in my eyes. Yeah. So um I I 
agree. I very much enjoy them. Eating my words from last year. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, but uh, I'm sure Ridian will put a quote up or something. But uh, we, I think, we'll, well, we'll bring it up at the end of part three because uh, it's fun to look back at what our predictions were for this year as well. So uh, yeah. it, it was, it was a very good game, and I tell you what, um, the story itself was pretty good, but I think the post-game story is what the proper story i was looking for and it was really really good the fight um, at the end man the fight at the end is so good one of the best fights in pokemon mm. history oh yeah yeah it was it was just the most in, well it was the most it's the most difficult pokemon battle i've had i assume we're talking about the same one we've all done it now we we um, won't we won't get into specific details just I in case any listeners details. haven't I, I won't get into specifics then, but uh, yeah, it's the hardest battle that I've had in a Pokemon game. It was um, a lot. Yeah, it was. It was a really good game. I really enjoyed it. As I think, the perfect Pokemon game would be the battle system you have in the mainline games, with kind of the gameplay of Legends Arceus, and you'd be looking at something perfect. And it was also I, the it, very. It, 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 Sorry, go Sorry. on. Richard. There's also the very satisfying uh, little mechanic where you build up your village as you go through the game. It sort of starts out basic, and as you do stuff in the game, it sort of builds up more things. Mm. You know, pop up. And it is a simple touch, but it, it's nice. It is nice, and the music was so good as well. So good. Oh yes, mm. nice. Well, uh, that just leaves one person, and that is Dan. Would you like to nominate your game? I I, I think we all know what it's going to be. But yeah, yeah. Say I, the line, Dan. Say the line. Elden Ring. Oh, hey. Wait, Elden so it, wait, Dan, it came out this year. Wait, Elden Ring released this year. It did. By the gods. It finally did. By the gods. Um, yeah, I I was um I was blown away by it. And I know it's a cheesy thing to say I was blown away, but I've played a lot of the previous Souls games and uh, basically when this game came out uh, in February uh, after I finished I, I felt like I was in a dream and I woke up and it was July uh, and I, I was just I, I, uh, it was it basically it was like I, I had high, I had high expectations anyway but it actually surpassed those high expectations and I think uh, and this is so much to do and you think you know you you play you learn you know you learn the ropes as as you would in any kind of souls game and and you think you know it you think yeah you know it but then it's like a miyazaki is like oh, 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 oh go down here see see what's what's down here and you're like wait whoa <laughs> and then you're like oh do you know i feel like i'm nearly finishing i'm really finished. and and you're like no no you're actually halfway through the game and yeah, uh, the I, I I was like I think I finished it like I I clocked in about a hundred and fifty odd Ooh. hours, which which is pretty high, and um, yeah I it's um I know a few of you guys have played it um and you all have like uh mixed feelings about it, which is which is which is good, but um you know but why I uh liked it was because of the you know the exploration and you know picking up new new weapons and trial it out and and the bosses are great and the dungeons and the oh, there's so much i could unpack here that i don't i don't know if i can actually fit it all in here but it's it um it's chef's kiss honestly it's like i see like from software it's like a restaurant right that i go to and you know and they bring up a new dish and you're like oh is this gonna be good and you try it and it's like you know like when you when you go out for food and you eat so much and you just feel really full at the end it's like that and it's it can be overwhelming and but it, it was worth it and i'm looking forward to what from software comes up with next so uh but yeah what do you guys think of it um you know i was quite i um i expected it to be really good right but when you think of the Souls games, you think um, kind of 
like tight corridors and like you know world spaces which are quite linear in a way yes um but then i thought open world i was a little bit skeptical over the open world i thought the system doesn't really lend to it mm. but then i played it and i thought no it absolutely does i don't yeah. they might have they might have changed a few things up but it really does work as an open world game um i feel like there was enough unique kind of dungeons to keep me really interested in that aspect yes. but the open world was great as well, and, and yeah, it, it's the um... environment. I'd say as well is just adds like I I can't think like the environments in that game are like something to behold. It's like it, it's really it's one of those things where you stop playing and you just admire the views mm. and it's got and... it's got that return of like the subtle storytelling as well, which um, I really appreciate as oh. well. I will say also this like uh, most Souls games they are kind of very they don't really I mean they have a story but they don't really tell it and this is why Vati Vidya is doing so well to like well this is this is what they actually mean right but in this now they actually do have a story that you do actually can follow up without I mean I still watch the Vati videos anyway just just because they they're good and thoroughly well researched but it's there is actually something to bite into and understand uh in a mm. way so i guess yeah. i guess then it, i i still think there's like subtle kills and stuff around the place with the story that isn't immediately obvious i quite like that but there is like you say there is a more obvious story going on as well i'm just thoroughly shocked in a way that a game that sort of was hyped up for like five, six years or whatever, not only came out, but actually kind of, it seemed lived up to people's expectations. Yeah. Personally, I've, yeah. I've not played it or anything, but I was expecting it to kind of come out and people would be like, hey, yeah, th- this, is, this, is, this is pretty good, you know. But no, it, it just, I mean, it's the best-selling one, right? Am I right? I'm going to say, why was, off? yeah, well, it, uh, so... When it came out, it actually knocked off Call of Duty Poor. off the charts, which is unprecedented. Yeah. And uh, and it and and basically it kind of goes because I remember uh, e the one of the guys from EA would saying, "Oh well, we only focus on multiplayer mm. because that's where it's at." And the case of the matter is, well, no, people still want really good single player game so um it's, yeah i i can 100 percent agree with that point it's why people talk about the elder scrolls you know more than they do a specific cod i think i think mm, it, yeah i think it's had more of an impact on like people's conscious and culture in video games things like dark yeah. souls hmm. and that's quite maybe that's a bit of a controversial statement but yeah i think this is what people really want uh for the most part yes people like their multiplayer games i yeah you know, i mentioned fortnite but like <laughs> yeah i think these single players are the games are the ones that have the most impact they're um, the most classic for as well they're the most timeless in a sense i mm, mean you know yeah. you can still play a solo you know a snes game and get really yeah. into it whereas like a multiplayer game on the SNES, eh, you know, I mean, they're, they're fun to play, but not quite as memorable. It's, you know. To compare it to movies, I'd say this, you know, Elden Ring is your Shawshank Redemption. Call of Duty <laughs> is your Marvel film that comes out every year, hmm. you know? Yeah. It's, it, I, I'd say that. I, I That's what I would say. It's, uh, it's appropriate that Tom mentions movies, because next category is the best movie of 2022. And um, as is tradition, I guess, I'll start off. So my nomination might be some other people's nomination as well. I can't quite tell, but that is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Um, So this is a movie... I mean, chances are, if you're into movies, you're aware of this anyway. There's not much I can say about the movie without really spoiling it. It's... um, 
It deals with the concept of multiverses and also the story, uh, you know, quite a heartfelt story of a Chinese woman who owns a laundromat who has kind of fallen out with her daughter a little bit and just wants to throw a New Year's party. They don't sound like they're linked, but they absolutely are. There's... I only watched this recently, uh, and I was going to say it as well, but I've got a backup choice to go yeah. ahead for it. Yeah, it's, it covers so many genres. There is, it's, uh, there's martial arts, there's comedy, there's like sci-fi, there's drama. There's, I can't go into it too much, unfortunately, but it is a thoroughly enjoyable film. There's not much more I can say without yeah. giving it away, unfortunately. It's the kind of film you don't want to know too much going into it. You want to know as little as possible, go into it, and just kind of have no expectations and let it take you well, like on the ride, because you will laugh and you will feel things. And it was really, I, I think, a really kind of more, not honest, but more kind of... Sincere. Really sentimental, sincere. It's a more sincere yeah. look at how the multiverse can work theoretically mm. than things that have been done in like Marvel and shit like that. Right. It's a lot more interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and shit like Rick and Morty. It's a lot more interesting, I find, and a lot more heartfelt. So, mm. yeah, it was, yeah, it was a pleasure to watch. And yeah, I was going to see it as well. So. <laughs> I, uh, sorry, yeah, go um, on. Yeah, I was going to say, um, one of the actors um, from the. the he was in the Goonies, and he was also in uh, the the guy that played Short Round and the guy yes. from uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, and he, he was in it. I was like, wait, that's him? I haven't seen him in years, and I was like, whoa. And I, I, I had, I felt a little, you know, like because obviously, I, I, you know, I grew up with Indiana Jones and the Goonies growing up, and. And so it was really nice to see him. It was also nice to see, like, because I was like, Michelle Yeo, I, I don't know if I even... And then I remember, like, uh, you guys were saying, oh, she was in Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, yeah, you know, you know. And, oh, and she was in um, um, a James Bond film as well. She's surprisingly good at being a, like, comedy character because she, she is quite a comedic character, whereas all of her other roles have been just action and quite serious stuff. So that, yeah. that was quite interesting to see as well. It's... She, I went into the film and uh, I didn't know anything about the film hmm. and I went into it and I thought that the daughter was going to be the main character and then it turned out she was and wow I, I she, she's not really like an archetypical main character is she definitely it's, not uh, it was a breath of fresh air honestly hmm. it was really unlike any other film that I've seen in quite some time, to be honest. It's uh, it's it's hard to even put it into a genre. Like I yeah. don't know what I'd call it. Is it sci-fi? Kind of, I guess. Mm. In a technical sense, but I wouldn't think of it as a sci-fi movie. Like it wouldn't be the first thing that came to my head. So mm. yeah, it's weird. And it's very psychological. Deals with themes of like like philosophy almost as well. Yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. If we delve too much into it, I think. It, it, Kind of gives it. A, yeah, I, 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 the best thing, the best thing, right? I, I say this in general: don't watch trailers ever because hmm. and don't read reviews. Yeah, and don't read reviews. Don't even yeah, listen to us. Turn this video off now. Unsubscribe. <laughs> uh, don't even don't uh, uh, turn turn off all your smart devices. You know what? The best thing you guys did for me when we all watched over Tim was tell me literally nothing about the film um, yeah. 100% agree with this. I think that's the way to go because I watched a trailer for a film and I was like oh is this is the guy who directed this film and I, wa and I watched the trailer and I was like well I think I've watched the film now mm. I guess I guess I, I'll try and forget it and uh, <laughs> and then go and see it when I don't remember it you know it's I don't would anyone else like to nominate their film of 2022? I'm happy to go second again. Yeah. Um, so, I was actually going to say what you just said, <laughs> everything at real at once, but I I did have another choice, also um, by A24. Okay. <laughs> I've been on a bit of a A24 binge recently. But uh, I went to the cinema to see Men this year, and I tell you what, I really enjoyed it. Tim came with me as well, so he might have some insight as well. Is it about men? 
it, it very much is, I'd say. Um, also kind of the opposite. <laughs> well, it's um, it's obviously a take on like sexist attitudes and stuff, whilst being a horror film. It's one of those films as well that has a very long wind-up, as A24 films tend to have. Mm. Um, like, in the opening scenes, basically, and this isn't a spoiler, this is pretty much in all the material you see for the film, it's about a lady who's just tragically lost her husband um i won't go into more about that but she decides to go to a lovely holiday cottage in the english countryside like i'm talking like you know middle class leafy kind of Hmm. thatched roof type uh place and throughout the film so the men in the film act all weird towards her. Um, they make comments about her. Um, often, I imagine, comments that women face in real life as well. But they become more often, and it does feel uncomfortable when you hear them. But it goes from that and becomes this horror film where well i i don't want to spoil it too much but it's a really good film and i love the slow wind up of it well have you got any comments on it tim two things i remember most from going to see men in the cinema was it did a very good job of creating a uncomfortable atmosphere which i guess is very uh, symbolic of a 24 films especially like the horror ones um but particularly the way it uses sound i found was really good like oh, yeah. um you probably remember this well tom you know the other person who's seen it here but you probably remember the scene where she's like standing by the tunnel and she does the whole oh thing and um it's stuff like that that always sticks out in my head and uh, makes a 24 films really memorable because i feel like that is kind of a recurring theme in these types of films is that they'll use a kind, some kind of abnormal sound to create some kind of tension. Yeah. And yeah. after that, like thing where it, it almost made her feel safe, and then it goes straight from that into this very, very uncomfortable scene where she sees someone like stalking her behind her. Um. So it did a really good job of kind of throwing you back and forth between feeling safe when she feels safe, and then feeling very, very, very uncomfortable when she does. So yeah, it was. The, again, this is kind of a criticism of a lot of A24 films, is that you go in for the ride and you enjoy the horror and it all, but sometimes it feels like they want you to have researched 20 different ancient gods before you go and watch the movie, <laughs> otherwise you're not going to understand the plot, which yeah. I, I guess you don't have to. I guess you don't have to. I guess it's something you can do afterwards, but um, yeah, it, 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 it happens a lot with those movies. But yeah, it was it was an enjoyable experience and it was a very good film. Yeah. Nice. I I have yet to see it, but it is uh, it's on some kind of streaming thing. I'm sure I will eventually get round to watching if it. You liked Midsummer Red. You hmm. will probably like Men because yeah. uh, very similar themes. Yeah. Nice. Uh, right. So Tim, I want to say your choice was the same as mine, correct? Yeah. Again, I was okay. I was initially going to say everything everywhere all at once, but I am a professional, so I did hey. come with a backup. Um, uh, the other one I wanted to mention is the unbearable weight of massive talent. Aha. Oh yes. Yeah. Was a again. I know we've said it like every film, but I went into it not really knowing what the hell to expect because it's a film about Nick Cage, where Nick Cage is in the film, but Nick Cage plays Nick Cage, and that's all I knew going into it. So. Um, going to see it, I was like, okay, I'm expecting I... full Nick Cage to Nick Cage in this film, yeah. and that's exactly what happens. <laughs> it's very weirdly meta. Um, it kind of just lets Nick Cage do Nick Cage, and that is when Nick Cage is best. Just yeah. let him you... do what he fucking wants, and then yeah. you get incredible performances like this. I'm I'm gonna say this like if because let's be honest, we all love Nick Cage here. Brian, thinking like if you don't know 
good at cages? Do you think it'd lose its kind of stuff? Or do you think it's this is meant for Nick Cage fans? Yeah, I, I, I... I think it is meant for Nick Cage fans, but I think if you went into it not knowing who Nick Cage is, you'd still enjoy the movie because mm. the character he plays is... It could be anyone. It doesn't rely too heavily on Nick Cage-isms. It's just, you know... Uh, extravagant yeah. Uh, yeah, well, out of this world character. It could be any rich person, really. Yeah, he plays a sort of washed-up actor. So, I mean, mm. technically, this could be your first, you know, um, introduction to Nicolas Cage. Right. As sort of, oh, he's a funny, washed-up actor, man. And then, you know, throughout, there are, like, references to his previous work. So, if you Very were much. new to it, you, you kind of pick up on what the references are. Like, if yeah. there's a shot of an action scene, he'll be like, yeah, it was really cool in that, dude. So, like, the the joke still hits because, like, you know he's looking at a movie. I mean, technically, this could be written about a fake actor. If you, like, change some of the references, you could write it about McBain from, you know, The Simpsons or something. Sort of, it, it would yeah. still land, but it is a lot more enjoyable if you're a Nick Cage fan. I think. Yeah, definitely. You, you you pick up on a few more things. And um, Pedro Pascal was just so good in it. He almost... Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard to go in a film with Nick Cage playing Nick Cage and be like kind of on the <laughs> same level of enjoying the performance, but he, he did. I, I really enjoyed Pedro Pascal in that movie. They, they both are... Because the characters are like friends in the film, really, or they become friends, there's some great chemistry between the characters. There is. They really mm. feel it. And yeah, I I've got to say it's one of my favorite films of the year as well. Uh, going into it, very feel good compared to men. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's it's yeah. very. It, it, I think everyone could enjoy it. It's a very like comfy movie. Definitely. Right. Uh, that leaves Dan. Are you ready to uh, nominate your film? I hope so, because that's the format of this video. Yeah. Um, I am actually gonna go with. Oh, this was a tough one because I, some of the people I <laughs> chose the same film I was going to, but <laughs> I am a professional like Tim is as well and Tom, uh, and I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for X. Twenty hmm. twenty four film. Yeah, so no. three three out of four. Hey, look, I'm sorry. Good lord, yeah, I, I didn't realise that. Fuck, I forgot everything ever all at once is E24. Oh my god, yeah. Sorry, continue, yeah. Dan. I, yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, I, they're killing it. They're killing it at the moment, E24, I think. I, yeah. Even though they're kind of, I mean, we've got even like each, like <laughs> a chart, uh, what was it, like a drinking game where every yeah. time you hear an, uh, uh, an odd noise, yeah. or a, uh, yeah, but um, yeah, the thing was, we we watched it um, uh, quite recently, actually, uh, and I remember just thinking, like, because uh, I, I was like, well, I, I I don't mind horror films, but sometimes I find them very predictable, right? And this was like a slasher horror set in the seventies, um, and. Uh, and I was thinking, oh, this is going to be one of those generic ones, uh, blah, 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 you know. And it's like, basically, if it follows a group of, of people making a poem, uh, as as you do. Uh, and, and it's in a sort of cabin. And I just, the whole time, I was just thinking, oh, well, there's these two... Uh, two old people near who who own the 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 cabin and stuff and I was like oh it's going to be one of those generic like uh they they're being sinful therefore we we're, we're puritans but as the film rolled out it was totally not what I was expecting mm. and it was a, and the thing was it was also actually fun as well i uh you know <laughs> There was some f fun. There was some fun kills. Uh, that are very memorable. That will stay in my head uh, for a while. Uh, but um, but the thing is, it's actually quite uh, poignant. And because um, basically, while you got a, um, you know, it's a, basically it's about uh, when, you know, uh, you know, sexuality and and age and things like that. And you know. 
and and it explores those themes of you know life and and death all all the great cheery stuff but it does it in a really sort of poignant thing i remember um without giving away too much there was the landslide moment uh with the um what's it fleetwood mac and that really oh, stuck yeah. out to me and it was like a and it totally it really subverted the slasher genre mm. and uh there were a couple of scares in there and stuff but it was just a really refreshing take on like slap you know slasher films it had in a general. brilliant soundtrack as well because it, it was it was set in a particular era they really went all in with the I think use of the music. I'm gonna say yeah. 1979, and uh, yeah, it it pays homage to I'd say the old slasher films of the 70s and stuff like that. Hmm. But it does it in such a way where it kind of reinvents. Well, it doesn't totally like I, I'm. It doesn't like reinvent the wheel. Uh, don't get me wrong, but it was really fun, and I you know I I was cheering towards the end. Uh, uh, for for the for the person, so it um yeah I really loved it, and there was some um uh standout performances as well from uh everyone as well in it, and um yeah uh I I um <laughs> just wanted to say you like, and this is gonna sound like a weird bloody point, but how authentic the pornography shooting was. <laughs> It felt, everyone, you know, jokes about 70s porn being, you know, with the music and everything. It really played that up, which was kind of entertaining and funny to watch. Yeah, yeah. they, they really... kind of lightened the mood before the slasher stuff going on. It did seem that whoever directed it did have a sort of a passion and interest in the 70s in general, because it, it did hmm. seem quite authentically made. Uh, you know, mm. for a lot of areas of the film, but yeah. As well, it's um, I haven't watched the rest of them yet, but uh, it is a series of films. It is going into a kind of franchise. If I well, they released there is a prequel, isn't there? Out yeah, like that. yeah. Oh, Pearl, I... Pearl, yeah. it's called. So it's a prequel. I've yet to see that, and uh, back about this year, uh, I think they secretly shot at the same time. As, oh, I as see. The making the film, uh, so I'm yet to see that. But mm. from what I've heard, it's pretty good. But like X is still up there. And then next year, they they're releasing a film called Maxine, with two X, the well, three X's. Yeah. So and it's set oh, in the but... 80s. So it's a follow up. It's a sequel to X. So I'm excited for that. And it's kind of like oh, okay. So get this... get ready for the X. Cinematic universe. Well, lads, I think uh, I think we've got some movie nights planned out in the there future. We are. Then. There we go. Right. Well, this is going to wrap up this part of the 2022 wrap up. But stay tuned because we've still got six different categories to discuss in part two and three. So that'll be coming up uh, 24 hours after this is released. So until then, goodbye.